So in physics, we're not using the most complicated uh, mathematics here. Most of the problems involve algebra. Sometimes we, we look at calculus to try to get a better understanding of what's going on, but in solving the problems, it's almost always algebraic. The principles themselves in physics aren't that difficult. Many of them are intuitive and are just basic common sense. It's a merging of the two which provides the most difficulty uh, for students. So we're going to talk about a strategy here. And of course, no two physics problems are going to be the same. So the techniques that you use aren't the same, but the philosophy can be very, very similar. So let's take a look at this. Um, the first thing <clears throat> that we want to do is sort of draw a um, diagram or, or you know, flow chart of um, you know, how we go about these things. Obviously, you're going to read the problem first of all to try to decide uh, you know, what steps to take. But probably the most important aspect of looking at a problem is to draw a diagram. And it's really your attempt to visualize exactly what's going on. If you can't draw a diagram of the interaction that's taking place, you really don't understand it. This is really paraphrasing uh, Einstein. And Einstein, you know, you know, in developing the special law of relativity, did it almost uh, with diagrams uh, at first. And then once he understood you know, exactly what was happening, once he had a picture in his mind of what was happening, then he could go on and develop the physics a little bit better. So draw diagrams, um, and this will help consolidate your visualization of this. Label all the physical quantities, okay? You've read the problem, what do they give you in terms of information? What was the initial velocity? What is the acceleration? What are forces? All these different quantities, you need to label these quantities and try to incorporate them onto your diagram or list all of your knowns. Okay, now, you've set out what's going on. Identify the principle involved. What am I solving here? Is this Newton's second law? Okay, am I doing the universal law of gravitation? Okay, what equation I choose is going to be based upon what principle uh, I've identified. And of course, this is where the math kicks in. So setting this whole thing up, you know, even before any of the math begins, okay, you need to have a nice sketch, if you will, of what's going on. Okay? Draw it out, identify everything that you know, and now the hard work begins. Choose the equations that are involved, use your quantities that you know inside the equations that are, are appropriate, solve the equations, and of course um, use those different values to find out what, what the end result is. Of course if you have time at the end, um, you always want to check your answers, make sure they make sense. We talked about dimensional analysis. Do the units on the left match the units on the right? Uh, make sure that the uh, you know, powers of 10 that are there you know, make sense for, for the type of uh, problem that you're talking about. So again, just a, a you know, reiteration of, of what um, we just did read the problem, draw diagrams. Um, the more complete the diagram, the better. Um, label all the physical quantities on the diagram. This is really important when we get to forces. Being able to label what each force is, and even the components of, of the, uh, the forces. Uh, coordinate systems. You know, what are you considering the horizontal distance? You, normally we apply x there. What is the vertical distance? Normally we have y. If it's an inclined plane, we might rotate that, that axis a little bit. And then, you know, again, identify principles which are involved, and that will help you choose the equations. Um, solve the equations. You know, you're looking for a particular answer, okay? Put the equations in terms of all the other variables that you use, and then substitute into the equations at the end, and finally check your answer. Okay? I really can't emphasize more the importance 
of um, you know, drawing a diagram out. The more visual you can get. I have very poor working memory, so I really want to have everything on the, the sheet of paper in front of me to help me again visualize what's going on. Um, again, the equations, the math are just tools that help solve this. You want to you know, simplify things as much as possible. But most of all, try to practice, especially on your homework, keeping everything as organized as possible so that um, two things. One, you can see what you're doing. If you just have a scramble here, you're going to lose numbers. And you're not going to you know, know where you are in terms of solving the problem. And uh, also, it makes it so much easier when you go back to check and see if there's a problem. If you get to the end and the, the answer makes no sense, having a high level of organization and solving the problem helps you identify where the mistake was made.